Mike? <laughs> I bet she has a sister uh, named Anita. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got a lot to do today. Yeah, we do. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it, it was a very, very busy news day. We have to talk about Al Sharpton. We got to talk about Mike Tyson. We got to talk about President Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, obviously. Powerball. Powerball. Now, did anyone win Powerball? Yeah, so. Yeah? Yeah. Who won? Yeah. Some old 13, person? No, no. It was 13 uh, employees from a company in Indiana that won. They chipped in. And I got a ticket, so uh, yeah. I don't wait. Wait, I don't understand when like groups of workers chip in and buy a ticket. Yeah. How much is the ticket? I know. Why bother? It's like all right, everyone, ante up eight cents so we could buy a Powerball ticket. <laughs> why not buy your own? I'd like to check back with these guys in about yeah, five years. Yeah, see what the money did to all of them. That'd be interesting. But um, all the people up here, snarl traffic up to Connecticut, shut down business in Greenwich. People spending thousands on their Powerball. <laughs> you didn't win. You lost. Right. It's good to see that it went to some hard workers, though. Yeah, that's 13 a good guys that worked their butts off for a mm -hmm. living. Very cool. Yeah. I like that. It wasn't like some old person that only has 10 years to live and wins the $250 million. I'm taking the lump sum. <laughs> yeah, you better take the lump sum. I'm going to buy one of those souped-up <laughs> rascals, scooters, so I could get around on it. One with a better horn. That is a pretty lame horn. Mm. All right, we're ready to go. 212-757-1027. If you got something, phones are already ringing. We'll go to them next. And the fax line is 212-957-WNEW. Coming back with the latest from 7 Mary 3 and John Mellencamp next. 1027-WNEW, the Rock of New York. The latest from 7 Mary 3 off their CD, Orange Avenue. That's over your shoulder. Good afternoon. It's Opie. It's Anthony. What are you laughing at over there? I heard some of the email again. A lot of people abusing us uh, today for some reason. Well, NEW.com, go there and you could uh, drop us an email. Uh, Mark from Annandale, New Jersey. Hey, Opie, do you still have that cowlick working for you with that hair? I personally wouldn't mind having hair, but I still like to get a little dig in. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you haven't been on the WNEW website yet, you know, there's pictures of all the jocks here at NEW. Mm -hmm. But in place of me and Anthony, there's our baby pictures. Yeah. And when we first got here, I thought it was a real cute, nice idea. But right. can we take our pictures off the website and update them to maybe our fifth grade pictures? We ought to do that. Like slowly just put in maybe third grade and then seventh grade. Because you know what the Internet's all about. And I guarantee there's some wacky pedophile out there, you know, uh. whipping off batches to you and I's uh. baby pictures. Ah. Uh. What? Uh, look. Now I feel violated of just by you saying that. Thank you. Well, I feel violated. My mom, you know, hands over these nice, cute baby, you know, pictures of me, and now they're uh, on this website, and you know there's nasty things going on at night with our pictures. Oh, they probably take the heads off and uh, put them on. Uh. I'm serious. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Can we have those removed immediately? We want them r removed immediately. Uh. I'll, I'll give my prom picture. Which one's that? With my three-piece tux. Oh. <laughs> Aren't prom pictures the most embarrassing damn things? They're horrible. You just, you're wearing that... Who has the picture with the big velvet suit and the big wide lapel? <laughs> Boy, can't think of anyone, Anthony. No, and that big bow tie. Yeah, can't think of anyone oh. of that. Oh. <laughs> I never <laughs> went to my prom. You didn't go to your prom? Didn't go. Why? I had no use for anything... Uh, oh, I know, why school. School. I know why you didn't go to your prom. Why, Opie? Why? Go ahead. Because you weren't even in school <laughs> when it's time for senior prom. That was probably the reason. <laughs> I, I couldn't be bothered <laughs> with all that pomp and circumstance at school. Right. Oh, you had better so. things to do, right? Prom. Get out of here. I'm not going to the prom. Well, you didn't, obviously. I dress up. Unless I could have worn my little army jacket with my private stripes on his sleeve, I wasn't going. Oh, we had a guy that did that in our high school. It was my attire. You had to be school. the radical one. I'm going to wear a tux with my sneakers. <laughs> I was in the back hall. I was one of the back hall guys. You were one of the burnouts. Yeah. You were one of the tech guys. I was trying to get get off and, you know, smoke a doobie. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I got caught, though. In, in the school? back of the school, yeah. Because you always, I mean, there were plenty of places you could smoke cigarettes or pot or whatever the hell you wanted to smoke and not get caught outside of school. Like, I went to John Glenn, and there was a whole woods, 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 all behind the school. Could have gone in there. No one's going to bug you. I had to smoke right in the alcove to the gym doors. <laughs> so at one point, I'm, I'm standing there, 
Jacob the, the monster uh, a hit, and uh, the gym teacher, Mr. Cirillo, opens the door and pokes me in the stomach. <laughs> I go right into his face. <laughs> I get to the office, man. I wasn't, I wasn't smoking. <laughs> He wanted the contact buzz, obviously. Yeah, I know. Well, part of the thing was you, you wanted other people to see you, you know, doing something Exactly. Wrong. And that's why you didn't go to the woods. It was cool. You wanted to take that risk because you wanted your peers to see you doing something stupid. So. And you really, thinking back, look stupid. Of course. <laughs> doing <it>. Of course. <laughs> All right, two one two nine five seven W N E W. We get a ton of faxes. That's the fax line. Someone asked for that, so we figured we throw it on the radio for you. And I hope you know the phone line by now. Two one two seven five seven one zero two seven one zero two seven W N E W. The Rock of New York. Latest from Pearl Jam off their Yield CD. That's uh, Wish List. Those guys coming to town for a few shows in September. Unfortunately. All shows are sold out. I think we have a few tickets laying around the joint. We'll be giving away when we get closer to those shows. Yes. Someone who's coming to town as well is the man, the myth, the legend, Elton John. He's going to be at the Garden October 13th and 14th. And this is very cool. Starting tomorrow at 1, win tickets before you can buy them. Mm. And I think we're doing that all weekend for you. Tickets go on sale, by the way, for the show Monday at 9 a.m. through Ticketmaster. The uh, lighters will come out. During Norma Jean. Ugh. I hate the concert lighters. I do hate the concert lighters. So cliche already. Yeah, but we all did it. I know. You know, it's just silly now. Let's see. You, you had to do it at uh, Freebird. Mm -hmm. You had to do it. You have to do it at least once at every... concert. You had to do that. Yeah, Freebird. Come on, man. <laughs> Big flame up full. Your, your thumbnail is black. <laughs> you ever have one with, that just goes like... It just self-destructs, the flint and spring goes flying, or it just uh, like blows up on you. It's like a rocket in your hand. The last show I did it at was the Kiss show, when they were doing Beth. Beth, the whole place was into it. <laughs> yeah, you had to do it during Beth. Yeah. What a rocket show that was. All right, on the way, we got Queen and Third Eye Blind next. See there. 1027 WNEW, where rock lives. Good afternoon. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. You know, I got to ask people out there in uh, Radio Land if anyone else saw the the, the, uh, the homeless guy drunk, passed out at Penn Station who peed his pants uh, this afternoon. Which one? <laughs> Which one? Man? Is that what the problem is? There's too many. Well, I got off a train and this guy was taking a nap. Taking a nap at noon. Why not? Good time to do that as with all us hardworking stiffs are trying to make a living. And uh, he is completely passed out, and there's a huge puddle oh. around the guy. So obviously wow. he relieved himself right there at Penn Station. And the amazing thing about it is mm. hundreds and hundreds of people <laughs> walked <laughs> by the guy and didn't even look. Didn't even look. That's New York, man. But if that happened in any other city, what would happen? There'd be ambulances. Yeah. And Are people okay? trying to help. And oh, my God. They'd invite them home for a shower and dinner. Yeah. In New York, yeah, no big deal. What they should do is put the homeless people on the side of the roads because then maybe there wouldn't be as much rubbernecking. People, because <laughs> they don't look at the homeless people when they're passed out. But if they see a, a fender bender on the side of the road, everyone looks. Everyone's got to stop. Everyone has to stop. So <laughs> I'm just wondering if anyone else saw that guy today and if he's okay because I, I was a little concerned. Oh, I, I missed it. I, I didn't see it. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure he's okay. All the rest are okay. He just maybe smells a little bit. All right. <laughs> Did anyone else see Mike Tyson yesterday? Oh, my God. They're showing the footage everywhere. This guy uh, goes before these uh, New Jersey boxing regulators. Yeah. Try to get his Jersey license because his Nevada license was taken away when he bit Evander Holyfield's ear off. Right. In his last fight. Now, do you think um, his handlers or whoever you call the people that hang out with Mike Tyson, <laughs> handlers, trainers, trainers, whatever, prepped him on w what to do in front yeah. of these guys? Well, he's got his lawyer, uh, Anthony Fusco, right? and he sat down in this meeting with Anthony Fusco at a very uh, official-looking meeting, a little table set up for him, little cups of water, the whole deal, and they asked him questions, trying to gear, I guess, his uh, demeanor, his anger, see if he could handle his anger, because the big thing Tyson said was he just, you know, got, gets carried away in the ring, but it doesn't happen out of the ring. <laughs> And meanwhile, he lost it in this meeting. Yeah, and then near the end, he's cursing, and, and he doesn't want to listen to anyone. And, uh, it was just amazing. He should have sat there, had his lawyer answer everything for him, and his lawyer's trying damage control. At one point, Tyson starts cursing. I've seen the video. The lawyer, Anthony Fusco, reaches over and tries to cover Tyson's mouth with his hand until, I guess, 
He realized he might lose a finger or two. <laughs> he might. And he pulled his hand away. <laughs> they should have had a muzzle on him. <laughs> They'll bring him in like uh, Silence of the Lambs. That's what they should have done. Said, look, look at him. He's t he's perfectly fine. You know, he, his anger is under control. And they're talking to people in Jersey, saying we don't want him here. People don't want because he would have to, you know, move to Jersey. Mm -hmm. He got his boxing license in Jersey. Keep him out in Nevada. <laughs> if he gets hungry, he could get a jackrabbit. Or something. <laughs> oh, come out on, in the man. desert. That is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> You know, the Daily News did a very interesting feature on a lot of the guys that have won the heavyweight uh, belt in the last 10 to 12 years. Mm -hmm. And there's only one guy that's normal and oh. has moved on with his life. Who? Oh. Of all people, Michael Spinks. Spinks? Spinks, because his brother Leon is a complete mess living in a right. homeless shelter somewhere in, uh, oh. I, I believe, St. Louis, they said. But Michael Spinks, after he lost to Tyson in that, that fight that lasted, what, 91 seconds, yeah. he took his money and ran. And he's set for life. He invested well. He has a nice house, nothing big. And he's uh, putting his kids through school and stuff, and his life is good. But they listed all the other guys that have won the, the title in the last 10 or 12 years. Oh, you know train wreck, city all over the place. <clears throat> you know what the problem is with boxers? They're, they're so, usually, so damn stupid that they have all these leeches that just crowd around them and drain them. Take their money. They go in. They they take the punches. And there's an entourage of hundred people that just are along for the ride. Yeah. When you're watching the fights at home, you think it's so cool. Wow. Look at his entourage. He's he's got a, a hundred hundred fifty people around him. The fighters paying for all that. Yeah. No one else. Don King ain't paying for that. Don King taking money. That's another sleaze bag. Yeah. Oh, so. Oh, what's this, Anthony? Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. I think it has something to do with Tyson. And now excerpts from Mike Tyson's testimony before the New Jersey boxing regulators as read by Alistair Cook. I ain't saying nothing, cause I be angry. I be trippin'. You know what I'm saying? Why do I got to go through this fucking shit all the time? Boxing is where I'm at. That's what I be about. Look, I don't need nothing from none of y'all. Yo, f*** all y'all. I just express in my hurt. I just wants to box. I ain't feel I got to be go through this bullshit. Yes, those are the words of the man, Mike Tyson. Wow! Bravo! <laughs> Bravo! Bravo. Tell me what you think of Opie and Anthony. That's stupid. 1027 WNEW, where Rock lives. It's Opie and Anthony. We got hey. some sad news. Is this really true? Yes, Opie, it is. See, kids, what time is it? It's, it's time to die. That's right. Buffalo Bob Smith, the cowboy-suited host of the Howdy Doody Show, who delighted the baby boom generation in the early years of television, died of cancer. Cancer? He another 80 years old. Another kid show hero dying of cancer? Hey, wait, wait. Oh, oh. It's my childhood. Tra it should just show the kids, you know, the smoking's bad and stuff. All these, all these old fifties guys. You ever watch I Love Lucy? Yes. They're all dead of cancer, and and every episode they were smoking. Well, most people are dead of cancer at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Everyone dies of cancer. It should just teach you. Matter of fact, in the paper, give me Newsday real fast. An old uh, baseball player died. Who? I know. Uh, t uh, Tim Tuttle was his name. Tim Tuttle. Huh? Bill oh, Tuffle. you were going to say Tim Tuffle. No, not Tim Tuffle. Talking about cancer. Listen to this. Oh, no. All right. Yeah, stall for me, please. Oh, oh great. It's Audi, Audi time. <laughs> it's Audi, Audi time. Oh. Grab your thing, I read. Okay, listen to this. Um, former major leaguer Bill Tuttle, who lost most... He lost much of his jaw and cheek to cancer and became a leading spokesperson against chewing tobacco. Oh. Died at age 69 on Monday. How could he become a spokesman? He lost 
Just shoving tobacco uh, into your mouth would rot it. Well, they say here several of his baseball cards show him with a wad of uh, jaw bulging from his cheek, and it got the best of him. He lost most of his jaw and cheek to cancer. That wasn't tobacco. That was just a tumor. That was a big tumor in my cheek. Oh, and all those baseball cards? Yeah. Oh, I had already stopped, but it was too late. <laughs> I see. My, my jaw just fell off. I picked that up. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so, oh, I can't believe, I can't believe he's dead. Oh, Buffalo Bob, dead. Howdy, baby. Do your music tribute later. All right. 1027 WNEW, where Rush Three is. kids, what time is it? Time to die. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York, Aerosmith. I don't want to miss a thing off the Armageddon soundtrack. They have rescheduled their dates. October 13th and 15th, they will be at Jones Beach. And October 17th, they will be at the PNC Bank. Art Center. If you're holding tickets for the uh, shows that got canceled, you could use those tickets for the new dates. Mm -hmm. All right. If you don't want to go or you can't go, then you could just go back to where you purchased your ticket to get your refund. <laughs> oh man, it's Sophie and Anthony. Oh, speaking of uh, concerts, before you oh, get man. into that, that's a funny line. N.A.W. welcomes Elton John to Madison Square Garden October 13th and 14th, and starting tomorrow at one, you can win tickets before you can buy them. Tickets go on sale Monday at 9 a.m. through Ticketmaster, but we'll have chances for you to win all weekend long right here at N.A.W. I'm a little ticked off because of that guy we just had on the phone, and he wouldn't go on the air with us. Mm. It happens. If you have a problem with our show, at least allow us to put you on the air so we can discuss this. He's mad at you <sighs> because you were making fun of Buffalo Bob uh, dying of cancer. I wasn't making fun. Hey, kids, what time is it? It's time to die. That's all I said. And uh, and Buffalo Bob died of, of cancer. And, and I think it's a message to, to not smoke. Exactly. Well, this guy is very sensitive, and I, I... Although he did hit 80, for God's sake. Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe you should smoke. He hit 80 years old? Yeah, he was 80. Oh, I guess smoking's okay, then. Yeah. But uh, th this guy thinks that we shouldn't make fun of certain topics on the Opie and Anthony show. And the problem is, uh, uh, what what do we decide not to make fun of here on uh, on our show? Mm -hmm. I think we've got to make fun of everything. Can we pick things that we shouldn't make fun of? Because I guarantee if we decide, if we put a list together of things we shouldn't make fun of, then other people go, why aren't you making fun of that stuff? You know, comedy hurts. You know, there's a ton of people out there, they'll laugh and laugh over and over at some of the stuff we do, but then if something hits too close to home, oh, then yeah. they're all pissed off and think we problem. stink. You were funny when you were goofing on everyone else, but then you said something that affected me. It now. affected me personally, so now I hate you guys. <laughs> you can't worry about that, right? Exactly. So, plus the fact, Buffalo Bob, wasn't he the guy with the, the, the cigarette commercial in the 50s? Yeah. Didn't he put a cigarette in, in Howdy Doody's mouth yes. to sell cigarettes? Yes. A Winston. And I now believe. the guy died of cancer, probably related to the years he smoked. Maybe. Who knows? You know. You never know. But Howdy Doody is dead. He's dead. Well... Howdy Doody's... The Howdy Doody is Never dead. was alive. Anthony. Buffalo... Buffalo... Yeah, how's it... Oh, it's almost like we lost two people. <laughs> oh, God. Horrible. All right. Man, if you have a problem with the show, at least let us put you on the air and we'll, we'll, we'll pound it out a little bit. Yeah. Try to, you know, understand each other a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. Ugh. <laughs> it's a losing battle. Yeah. Are we kidding? Sure. All right, what do you got on the instant feedback if you go to the WNEW website? All right. I thought this was pretty funny. From Derek in Red Bank, New Jersey. Uh, he likes the show. Oh, thanks. There's one of you. It says, when 3 o'clock comes on, I'm all ears. Kind of like Opie's picture. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that picture's great, man. <laughs> you with your little polka dotted jumpsuit. You still got that? Uh, no, I don't. Not still wearing, I, thought, I thought you were wearing that yesterday at the station. No? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. I was wearing it. I was trying to attract guys yesterday. And that was me, yeah. I went down to the Port Authority with my little polka dotted outfit. I went to the bathroom searching for the glory holes. Yeah, that was me, Ant. That's me. Jeez. 
idiot. You've got yeah, a velour right. top on. I know. I, look, I got the John Gotti look. Oh, you look real hip. That was cool. Yeah. I, was, I was cool in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, you were I real was cool. <laughs> Not much cooler than what I had on. I remember I got yelled at because I got Elmer's glue on the uh, velour shirt. You sure it was Elmer's glue? <laughs> oh, no, Opie. No, I guess you're right. Yeah, I was down at the port at the... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Oh, <laughs> Jackass. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York with Green Day and Time of Your Life. It's Opie and Anthony. Daily News hit it on the head, the head today. What do you got? Remember yesterday we were talking about how hot the women are in New York City? Yeah. You know, stating the obvious, obviously, but you walk around in the summertime and the women wear practically nothing true and as a guy it's, it's pure torture out there when you're walking around it's great trying to get to your job and stuff well the daily news in the thursday section notice it's really hers day oh i get it so uh they write articles that lean toward women and they discuss the issue of women walking around with barely any clothes on in the summertime in manhattan keeping cool keeping it real this is pretty funny, though. Summertime on the streets of New York City has both sexes hot and bothered for different reasons. The current fashion trends for women are so bare that the dress code Giuliani is enforcing on gals and sex shops covers more than what some women throw on to run to the corner for milk. True. The effect this uh, look is having on our guy population is extreme and often annoying. So then what they did was they had a guy explain his point of view on what's going on out there, and then a lady uh, explaining her point of view on the issue. Mm. Got to hear, whoever they interviewed, this guy makes all guys look bad. But he states some true facts, actually. He goes on to say, uh, trust me on this, no man needs Viagra during the summer. <laughs> Just like every other male humanoid who still exhibits a pulse, I can't wait till hot weather season because that's when women wear as few clothes as possible. I mean, am I not supposed to look? And if I'm not, then blind me right now because there's no other way to avoid the fabulous garden of barely clothed feminine beauty that blooms every year around this time. Whoa. <laughs> you can just hear that thick Italian accent. This guy's horny. Yeah. Go ahead, call me a pig, but I'm really not. I don't make comments, wolf whistle, lick my lips, or make long, lingering visual body searches as another semi-dressed woman saunters by, and I don't condone guys who do. In fact, I go out of my way to be politely correct. Uh, uh, politically correct, sorry. Averting my eyes as much as possible, trying my utmost not to stare. Every guy does that. You, got, you have to. It's hard, though. Yeah, you, you gotta look away when they're coming at you. And then when you see they're looking away, then you sneak your peek. Yeah, or, or you look into the, the, the windows of the shops and stuff and mm -hmm. hope for a bounce glance. That, that's beautiful. The mirror, yeah. Yeah, or, or the windows gives a mm -hmm. nice reflection sometimes. Uh, the guy goes on to say, but sheesh, asking me not to react to what's going on in the streets these days is an exercise in self-denial that would test a saint. All right? Mm. And then uh, quickly he goes on to say, so ladies, please understand, we love you. You're beautiful. And if you insist on wearing clothes that show off your physical assets, we're going to check out the merchandise. <laughs> oh, man. This does not make us sex-obsessed swine. It simply means we are men and alive in the glorious, glamorous summertime. Sure. So that's the they're, they're throwing it out there. I'm going to look, huh? I mean, why not? It's not like I'm asking them, you know, hey, honey, I see you packing a couple of cans as you're walking down the street. You mind if I come up and take my tongue, hey, baby? <laughs> So then they got the ladies' point of view on this issue. Oh, painful, painful. couple shots right to the gut here. All right, so the lady says, For the life of us, we women don't get why guys continue to think that talking to our boobs and shouting obscenities at us when we don't respond is a turn-on. Who does that? <laughs> yeah, who does that? You, you see all the construction workers, they line up every day yeah. out there. It's hysterical to watch those guys. Uh, she could be in a gunny sack with tube socks stretched up to her knees and galoshes in a freaking snowstorm. Guys will still find it necessary to dig deep into their limited lexicon to come up with pearls like, Yo, chocolate, what's up with them digits? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and even the corner, hey, sweetheart, nice form. Well, let me hip you to a couple of things, this woman says. Women should be able to wear whatever the hell they want without some strange walking up to them and treating them like they're on stage at scores. If it's 800 degrees outside, I'm not going to forgo my tank top or a sweater just because you can't just shut your trap. Public uh, degradation and humili humiliation is not a woman's idea of a smooth way to make her acquaintance. 
face it. What women uh, wants to tell a big, burly, six-foot guy is, you know, to get lost. But he's so big, she gets scared and she has to move on. The travesty is that these guys are the same fools who are surprised when women don't immediately fall to their knees, thank the Lord for sending such a fine gentleman their way, and excitedly hand over their phone numbers. Well, we're not looking for relationships. What is she? It makes it sound like if you see her walking down the street, right, and she's looking good, yeah. she's in uh, uh, scantily clad because of the weather, that we want, uh, uh, we want marriage. No, we so don't. we're going. Hey, sweetheart. Right. Nice ass. <laughs> hey, hey, honey. <laughs> Come and marry me. Right. No, we just want to. We're just looking. We just want to take a look. Anyway, she goes on. She goes, follow this simple rule of thumb the next time he thinks uh, my simple red summer dress is worthy of a damn baby. Do fries come with that shake? <laughs> that thing you just said to that lady, go home and say it to your mama. If she smacks you, then you know not to say it to a woman you don't know. So, I thought it was a very good article because it's so obvious that's going on out there in the streets during the day. Ladies, you look great. You look great and we want to look. I apologize, you know. It's nature. What, what did we say when we first moved back to New York? Four or five years ago when we were hanging in New York, mm -hmm. you know, the, the girls, they were still wearing bras. Right? Yeah. You know? Now it's uh, bra optional. Bra optional. You barely see one out there. Yeah, they were buckled up like uh, battleships. <laughs> you know? Four years ago, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, so there you go. Got something for the show to add? 212-757-1027. Uh, we got some Everclear and the Rolling Stones on the way. Also, Aunt, you were saying earlier that uh, a couple of your aunts had a problem with something we did on yesterday's show. Oh, the wedding. The wedding thing? I had to open my yap. Really? Mm-hmm. All right, we'll talk about that next. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York with Everclear, and I will buy you a new life. It's Opie and Anthony. Now, we got to get into this really fast. Mm -hmm. You went home yesterday, and a few of the aunts started calling the house, pissed off at you? Well, we were talking about weddings yeah. yesterday, and some of the things that happen at weddings, and I might have brought up a few uh, aunts and relatives and stuff, but I never mentioned names. So all of them start calling and asking, was that me? Was that me? Because now, now we're here, New York, all my relatives are here. And they're asking if it, uh, I was talking about that. You know, we got to get fired again because it was so much easier, <laughs> easier to do radio when our families weren't listening. I know. Now you get phone calls. What did you mean by that? I, I have to Who hide. Was? I have to hide. Every time I go home, I'm like, oh, please don't call me. And then on the phone, it's like, no, it wasn't you. You know who I'm talking <laughs> about. It's the other one. And then yeah. that one calls. No, it's that one. Well, you were in rare form yesterday. we got to replay this rant of yours. I was just talking about weddings. Well, what happened was we were coming out of a Bob Seger song, you know, Full-time rock and roll. Full-time rock and roll, no big deal. And all of a sudden, it just got ugly in here. Hi, Andy W. Hope and Anthony. Yeah, what's hey. going on? Hey, listen, I just wanted to, to give you a phone call of support. I know, you know, most people have been getting on your case and stuff. But I think you guys are a riot. Hey, thanks a lot. I beg you to tell 100 people for us because we need <laughs> to get some more listeners. I, I have been telling everybody because I've been listening to Andy W. Like, for like 20 years. And I, it was getting kind of tired. You know, and I, I have to admit, I wasn't really listening on the way home. And then, uh, you know, during drive time, it's like two weeks ago, there was like really bad traffic, you know, trying to get home from work. And the only thing that kept me from doing like a Michael Douglas and falling down <laughs> was, was when you were, you guys were talking about that, that one lady, were you playing a phone call about bouncing around ten times? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I was laughing so hard, there were tears rolling down my eyes, you know, and, and, uh, and then doing the Moses thing. So, like, I really needed it. You know, a half an hour ride took, like, two hours to get home. Well, the Charlton Heston traffic will be tomorrow on the show. Yeah, we'll do another one. That, uh, that was excellent. Me and Anthony's goal is simple. We're not here to be mediocre. We're here to give people uh, a show to listen to on their way home where they're going to forget about the traffic. Exactly. Everyone has that one show they listen to in the morning. But on the way home, they're all over the radio dial, and we just want to make this a place where you can come and laugh and forget about the traffic and your nasty day at work. I, I think it, it's definitely a, a good change, and uh, you know, like I have been telling people, the bits have been really good. Thanks, bro. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of fun. Cool, so, I appreciate uh, it. Just uh, spread the word for us, because we're really going to need the help. <laughs> good deal. Welcome back. And uh, Hey, listen, you know, easy on the chickens, will you, man? Yeah, you got it. That was classic yesterday. Oh, cool, man. <laughs> Take it easy. All right, bro. Later. Bye. Right on. I like wow. that. It's about time. Cool. Thanks a lot for that. Okay, there's one good one. Yeah. <laughs> Eight billion bad ones. We're not even going to chance it and pluck down another line at this point. Look at this little story. Ann Landers. It's about those uh, lawsuits that okay. people get uh, money for that are pretty stupid. Frivolous. Oh, frivolous lawsuits? Lawsuits, yeah. All right. 27-year-old Michigan man. <laughs> 
claimed that a rear-end auto collision turned him into a homosexual. <laughs> And he was awarded two hundred thousand dollars by a jury. So he actually gave him money. Two hundred grand. Because he claimed he became gay after a rear-end accident. Claimed the accident four years ago left him unable to carry on normal sexual relationship with his wife. Although he uh, his only physical injury was to his back. Said the accident also had a jarring effect on his personality and altered his sexuality. Told the attorney and the jury that he moved in with his parents and started hanging around gay bars and reading homosexual literature. <laughs> And they gave him money. Gave him 200000 and the wife got 25000 Now, Anthony, I don't know about you, but it's going to take more than one rear-ending to make me <laughs> gay, okay? <laughs> I'm serious. It's going to take a hell of a lot more than that. <laughs> Maybe it hit him right in the tailpipe. <laughs> wow, that's, that's pretty wild. That's awful. Very good. Hey, we're also getting a uh, request for the Mike Tyson stuff from earlier. Everyone saw the, the news with Mike Tyson losing it at that hearing. He's trying to get his boxing license back in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And things were going quite well. You know, he had a nice little lawyer there and everything was fine. And then he just, he snaps and loses it, starts cursing. And then uh, the lawyer's trying to calm him down and he won't calm down. He's ranting and raving. Yeah. And, uh, the lawyer, you know, put his hand up to Tyson's mouth and then thought twice and moved the hand away because he didn't want to bit off. Keep your hands and feet away from the hopper at all times. <laughs> exactly. So I don't think it's looking good for Mr. Tyson now. No, they were they were asking him questions about uh, his anger and, you know, about uh, the Evander Holyfield ear thing. You know, regular questions that they should ask. Yeah. And they asked him too many times, I guess, and he got riled up and started yelling. Anyone else notice how punch drunk he is, too? That's kind of tragic to... Not the Mike Tyson of the old days, <laughs> where you could almost understand what he was saying. Now he's like, what? Well, boo the waffle my thing, yo. Well, we got some transcripts from his speech at the hearing. Ah, really? Would you like to hear some of it? Sure. Okay. Could you tell me what you think of Opie and Anthony? Well, that ain't really? gonna do it. All right, Mr. Ah, Mr. DJ. All right, Mr. Buttons. Oh, shut that was a up. good one. All right, let's try it again. Well, guess what? You're going to hear that little sweeper right after this <laughs> bit. And now excerpts from Mike Tyson's testimony before the New Jersey boxing regulators as read by Alistair Cook. I ain't saying nothing because I be angry. I be tripping. You know what I'm saying? Why do I got to go through this fucking shit all the time? Boxing is where I'm at. That's what I be about. Look, I don't need nothing from none of y'all. Yo, fuck all y'all. I just express in my hurt. I just want to box. I ain't feel I got to be go through this bullshit. Yes, those are the words of the man, Mike Tyson. Bravo. Lovely. Bravo. Lovely. Can you tell me what you think of Opie and Anthony? They are the lowest form of life on earth. Hi, Andy W. Hey. Yeah. You guys suck, man. Well, tell us something we don't know. I mean, you guys are nothing. I, you're saying that all you want to do is show that everybody can drive home to. The only show to listen to is Rocky. He's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, you guys. Yeah, 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 wait. Yeah, he's real funny. He's funny looking. <laughs> do you realize that guy is about 500 pounds? I know. 500 pounds. If he wants real ratings over there, yeah. at whatever station it is, he should set up a video camera and let uh, Times Square show the video of him trying to wipe his ass after <laughs> he takes jumbotron. a dump on the Jumbotron. That, then he'll get real ratings because everyone would want to check that out. The Adventures of Rocky and Blaine Winkle. Hey, Rock, watch me pull a Twinkie out of your ass. <laughs> that trick never worked. <laughs> oh, Blaine. Hey, hey, Blaine Winkle, you have to wipe my ass. No, that gets a little smelly back there, Rock. No. <laughs> Please. 1027 WNEW, where Rock lives, where Rock kin. Huh? Huh? Oh, 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 DJ Segway. I get you. We're Rock Kin with uh, Greg Kin, the breakup song. <laughs> the guy that had to name every single one of his wow. albums after his name, remember? You're like a wacky DJ doing that. Thank you, thank Old you Pete. very much. I appreciate Pete. that. I had a Barry out on Long Island and uh, Wayne in Edison, New Jersey, emailing us. Cool. Instant email. Instant email. You know, you guys got to, like, you know, take advantage of that, though. 
We have this instant uh, feedback set up. No one is doing this in all of New York. What you can do is go to the WNEW website where me and Anthony are on the air. Mm -hmm. You click on our pictures, and if you have a comment about anything we're saying, just jot us a note with yeah. your opinions and your, ex you know, whatever. And, and shoot it off to the studio, and we'll read it on the air, and we'll give you credit. Most people are using it to say, you guys rock. Or you, you guys, guys suck. <laughs> you know? I got to tell you, too, I'm a complete computer nerd. And uh, in the coming months, whatever, we're still here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I like setting up cameras in the studio, yep. taking pictures, popping them on websites. Yep. You're seeing that. I'm a nerd. You think you could sneak a camera into Rocky's studio so we could see him take a dump <laughs> and try to wipe his butt? Hey, Rick, why don't you wipe your butt? <laughs> Oh, that trick never works. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure is a mess down there, Rock. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Blaine Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm reading in the paper. Okay. That uh, OJ's Rockingham house is being demolished. Yeah, about time. New owners, they want to, you know... Put up a new house there. But people are morons anyway, because they'll pass by the empty lot and go, that's where the house was. <laughs> yeah. The neighbors are still just going to be screwed. Th see that empty lot? That's where OJ lived. Right. Mm-hmm. So. But, but what if they're destroying evidence of where the, the real murderer is? <laughs> yeah, right? I keep saying, they're going to pull that blade out of there, the big bulldozer. Hey, what? What's this black jogging suit? <laughs> was, what, why is there an eight iron wrapped around that cloth and there's a knife and a black bag? <laughs> it just fell out of the wall. <laughs> I'm not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah, so he's, uh, you yeah, know, the owner's plowing it down. He's going to build a new house there. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier, too. Lewinsky <laughs> has turned over the dress. Oh, oh. you think the dress is... I don't know, standing up on its own at this well, point. Well, that seems to be the, uh, what she says is on the dress. Is they're going to they're gonna test it against the president's DNA and see if it is actual presidential spooge. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. And as a, a close friend of mine, uh, Joe Curry, says, <laughs> I got a shirt in my room that'll get me life. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this is exactly what's going on. You can't sugarcoat this. It's a dress. Come on. It's a dress. The president might have fouled this dress. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Well, no, don't worry, Monica. I'll let you know. Keep going. Oh, my God. Keep going. Oops. <laughs> Why do guys always let the girls know when it's a little too late? <laughs> you better let me know. All right. <laughs> what? What am I even talking about? You don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Very oh, good. Don't worry. Very I'll good. let you. Oops. <laughs> Time. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about toast or something. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with the Dave Matthews Band and Stay. It's Opie and Anthony. And I have been vindicated. Hey, and it's... I have been vindicated. It's Mr. Al Sharpton. How are you, sir? I got a slap on the wrist <laughs> from the Pagonas Five. Yeah, you only have to pay... $65,000. That's right. I can make that with one march to the Apollo Theater. <laughs> They'll fill up that big Volkswagen hubcap I used to wear around my neck. <laughs> they'll pass that around the community. And they'll fill that up. <laughs> One march. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Mr. Sharp. Man, Congratulations. Because of Tawana Broly, I gotta play power balling. <laughs> my money making motto is where the hell's the lotto? <laughs> Got it. God damn. Woo! Good. Woo! That was good. How the hell am I supposed to fold my Jerry curl? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> hey, Al, hey, you done? Yes. Okay. Al's done. <laughs> Anthony's back. I just want to say something. Uh, first of all, Bobby in Howard Beach, thanks for the email. <laughs> Get this. Which crime do you think Clinton will be charged with? It's very topical. Perjury? Obstruction of justice or bestiality? <laughs> Bing. 
<laughs> That's a toughie. That's good. I, good. I, I got to say, uh, I saw Geraldo on Regis and Kathy Lee this morning. I saw that this morning. What Is he to getting Geraldo? a check from the White House? What happened to him? I don't know. He he doesn't seem very open-minded anymore. He's defending the president. Yeah. To the end. To yeah. the hilt. I mean, this is a guy who is supposed to look at everything. Evidence. Evidence. He's not looking at evidence. He's looking at somebody else who tripped over his schween on the way to success, like he did. Yep. Yep. Kathy Lee's another one, first of all. Uh, she she was sitting there defending the president. She had because, the schween? Yeah, well, she tripped. Uh, her hubby tripped over uh, his schween. <laughs> He's another one, GIF. Yeah. Well, same thing. So Kathy Lee uh, is defending him, and Geraldo is defending him. Geral Dildo Rivera <laughs> on the air, just making up things. Now, we used to be Clinton supporters were saying he didn't have sex with her. Didn't do it. He said he didn't do it. He didn't do it. Now they come out and start saying, well, what does that matter if he did? <laughs> even if he did, it doesn't matter. And now they're even going so far, I heard some people say that if he lied about it, it still isn't perjury. How did that happen under oath? Hey, you know something, in my opinion, well, perjury. It's, it's the definition of sex they're going to go for. Oh, please, please. If he perjured, throw him out. That's what I say. Ain't going to happen. You don't think so? Nope. The economy's too good, and they're going to drag this on until he gets out of office. He only has a little over a year left, right? I think they should. You know how these things go. It's ridiculous. This, we're already six and a half months into this thing, and nothing has been proven yet. That's a lion sack. We well, all know that. There's been 20 indictments, though. Yeah. Yeah, and, and half the people have left the country. Or, half the people died. have left the earth, yeah. not the country. And now, how about this also? This is interesting. Now, uh, Monica Lewinsky is uh, testifying. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're going to badmouth her and try to discredit her. Mm -hmm. This was the same girl that when she was supposed to keep her mouth shut, uh, Vernon Jordan, Clinton's buddy, is telling Revlon what a great girl she is and how they should hire her. For 90 Th grand. Oh, yeah. An, a, a White House intern For stepping into grand. a $90,000 job at Revlon because Vernon Jordan's out there going, she's the best. This girl's a saint. She's wonderful. Take her. Take her. She's, she is perfect. And now she opens her mouth, starts talking. Mm -hmm. This whore. <laughs> this slut. <laughs> Stalking <laughs> whore. Hua. <laughs> yeah. Hua. So well, who do you believe? I, I tend to believe somebody who at least sticks to a story. Nunzio. Yeah. yeah. Believe Nunzio. The new White House chauffeur is going to come. <laughs> well, now they got. Good for, you. Good now, for you guys. Now they got Monica's dress, too. Yep. Monica's dress is now uh, with the FBI. Doesn't They're even combing need, it. Yeah, it doesn't even need a hanger to stand straight up. So. <laughs> you know what I don't understand? <laughs> you know what I don't understand? <laughs> My God. Well, there's use no. whisk. Protein Wait. gets out protein. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It was. It, it wasn't the next day that she went public. It was a long time. What'd she do? Just hang up the dress? Yeah. And just leave it? Well, yeah. That's, you know. It's like Jurassic Park. A drop of resin hit it. <laughs> and we can clone the president in later years. We've turned this mosquito into a pterodactyl. <laughs> we can do the same to the president. <laughs> no, obviously they uh, they have something because. Uh, well, they got they got messages from the president on her yeah. answer machine. Gifts. The gifts that the president gave Monica. He went. Uh, <laughs> Could you give those back? <laughs> hey, come on. What is that all about? Hello? Happy Groundhog Day. Here's a Mercedes. Yeah, 37 times that she visited the White House were on occasions that, that Hillary, Hillary wasn't was, there. Right, she was out of town. Oh, well, what a coincidence. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Nothing. And maybe that. Kathy Lee was there. I wouldn't be surprised. if It wouldn't surprise me at least if Kathy Lee didn't get a taste of that oh, when God. she was at the White House. Oh, I'll you? say it. It wouldn't surprise me. Oh. Are you saying on this here very radio show that Kathy Lee got some action from the president? Kathy Lee. <laughs> Hillary's not.